one. Well, we've got to get that on the record. I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Mr. Perry consent. Have that. I can talk about that if you want. <coughs> or we want to do that regular session, whatever you wish. <coughs> I'm not done now. Okay. Um, I was uh, made aware after meeting with Mr. Eisenstein and his counsel uh, with Mr. Osmanti about a month ago now, maybe three weeks, maybe. The time has passed, yeah. <laughs> and we had told them that they could not build the pavilion because we were concerned about the village ordinance um, and ODOT's concerns about um, any regulations they had concerning the easement that they own the property. Um, we had agreed that they would go and check to see if ODOT owned the property. I believe Attorney Shevlin thought that there was no ownership or anything filed. And I said if they would check with ODOT, then we would take the next step through ARB, which would be a variance of the riparian setback requirement, which is 120 feet. And we waited. Uh, I found out through a phone call uh, two days later that they were building it anyway. So I verified that and dug out the ordinance for Dave. And it does indeed say that there's a requirement of 120 feet from Yellow Creek. We think they're probably within 90 or 100, it seems. Uh, I called ODOT and I spoke to their regional director. And he was quite surprised that they would build a pavilion without checking it at first. And his statement to me was that they're on their way here that they're going to go through their legal department, that he's going to have an amount of time to tear it down or they're going to tear it down. Now, in addition to the ODOT concern, um, we also have the county building inspector, who I understand never issued a permit to build anything. And we have the requirement of Poland Village that was never met. So we have three different requirements that should have been addressed. One, which is the Poland ordinance, which there's a way to proceed. You ask for a variance, and if, you know, the ARB decides the variance is warranted, then it can be approved. And then the county, and I imagine there's a process to which that they would approve it as well. And then finally, ODOT, you have to address them. And I think the important thing to note was it had nothing to do with whether or not it's a good thing for the community. And it's a wonderful thing for the community. I think showing the movies there is great. <clears throat> and building pavilion is wonderful. I would like it to be there. Um, that has nothing to do with what the law tells me has to be done. And that is where, despite what I may think or anyone else thinks about what the requirements are, they are there. And as a solicitor to the council, I cannot tell anybody, nor would I, that you don't have to follow those rules. Um, and even I, if I disagree with the outcome that they may prescribe, they are there to be followed. So, as it stands right now, it's ODOT who has first crack at this, and they're going to address it first. I imagine the county is going to address it next. And then finally, we have the ordinance, which is a misdemeanor four, <coughs> which is punishable by 30 days in jail and a fine, which, you know, if you don't enforce a law for one person, then then you might as well not have laws. And you know that's just um, the fact. So I told ODOT that I would wait to hear back from them. They were going to come out and do an actual measurement, in my understanding, and determine their course of action. That we would follow whatever they said they would do, and I would advise council accordingly. That's where it stands. No, Anthony, I've actually done my, my measurements. Um, I went, to, went out, took measurements, took pictures. Um, what I came up with to the, to the actual creek edge, uh, 77, 78, 78, 79, um, that's to the creek edge that is not to the center of the stream, which is the way that the, uh, the ordinance is actually written. But, I mean, you can very <coughs> simply add on 20 more feet, and, and you're at 100 feet. That's, that's it. So. Uh, I think questions about that first. The other issue, which I can talk about in my report, concerns a, um, a tree branch that fell on a car 
um, on Riverside. I'll talk about that next. That's it. Um, 
It made it look like Bob's full of electricity. You know, actually physically come in here and install the electricity. And that didn't happen. We were doing it for the safety of the people. And we didn't go through the right channels, I guess, to get permission for it. Um, I've had a lot of phone calls on this. Probably each one of you have had phone calls. Um, and, and a lot of people say bad things about the village council, putting it in the paper that way, about why we didn't, on our part, get permission, and how Bob went about doing his stuff. Um, everything Bob's done for us all over the years has been an electrician. He's my vice president on the committee, and he's done it for free. You know, and everything that we've done out there in that box has come out of money out of Celebrate Fulham, not out of anybody's tax dollars, not out of any of your budget. So basically what I'm kind of asking, I gave you guys the apology tonight. I'm kind of hoping, maybe for the record, you guys can give Bob an apology for making it look like he stole something and done something criminal, and it's not the case at all. And it just so it clears up so that we can go forward as a committee for next year's event. You know, because I've got 90% of my income for that event comes from the citizens of this town as far as donations, sponsorships, um, you know, gifts, whatever. And I don't want to see that black mark on Celebrate Poland, and I don't want to see that black mark on Bob. Because, you know, we met as a committee and talked about it. we don't think really that we were that wrong other than we didn't ask permission and we never asked permission you know years previous to now but we won't make that part of the agenda for next year <clears throat> so i want to thank you guys for letting me let me speak and hopefully we can put this all you know behind us so that we can move on all right. Thank you. Sure. And, this, and we said from the day one, this is not an issue of Celebrate Poland, and this is not an issue against the Township Trustees. This is, and we weren't looking for this. We were, we were minding our own business, going along, doing our thing, and all of this was thrown on our lap. And I didn't call the news media, I didn't tell them to report this, it just happened. So don't think that I'm having anything against Mr. Lytle or Celebrate Poland or Trustees or anything. I wasn't, we have more important things to do than worry about stuff like this. As far as your concern, I, mean, I think I can speak for council that we have nothing but admiration for what you guys do for Celebrate Poland, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's better every year, bigger every year. And I mean, Greg, you're, you're easy to work with, no problems there at all. So that's not the issue from our standpoint. But thank you for coming. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Bob, come up. For the record, uh, Robert Lytle. 552 Stoner Avenue, Toland, Ohio. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, members of the council, uh, other members. Um, I really didn't prepare, plan on speaking tonight here, but uh, nonetheless, I think Greg said things quite well. And uh, honestly, I thought everything was covered. Right in God, I thought everything was covered. I talked about, um, you know, he was getting ready for his graduation party and all those kind of things. That's why I forgot about that. Um, you know, Billy's is on our committee. Greg was supposed to make mention of it to us. And quite honestly, I thought all the bases were covered when I went about doing the business of providing the electrical service that I've done for many years here. And as Greg mentioned, free of cost, you know, just like I do for Relay for Life and other things of that nature. So, you know, in the words of Joe, when I talked to you tonight, that's fine. Thank you, huh, Joe? <laughs> but, anyways, and I did mention it to Joe as well. Bottom line here, Mary, no problems with you, I never have. Council members, no problems here whatsoever. Not looking for anything, you know, other than, as Greg said, from my standpoint, the inference that I stole something, that, 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 that's not right. Okay, I don't have any problems with the fact that we have miscommunication and we need to do better with respect to that. But the inference that, and Tim, and Mr. Mayor, by no means do I think that you went out doing anything about this. I've never known you to be that way, nor do I consider you that way today. Okay? I think it was just one of those things. But at the same time, there was an inference that I had stolen something. And I would appreciate that being cleared up. 
that's really the only thing I, I really have to say with respect to things. And again, hopefully we'll get things straightened out here. And as far as everything's concerned over there, and I did try to get a hold of you, Mr. Mayor, I, I hope you know that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, like everything else, you guys know I'm a professional electrician. I'm more than happy to do that stuff for free for the village and for anybody else, as I've done in the past. We said we were for life. I mentioned to Joe that the village owners said that you had all approved like $500 towards putting either uh, power or lighting out there or whatever. And I believe Kathy Lynn's going to be coming to you as well. And they asked me to do that, and I told them the same thing. By all means, if you get the material, I'll donate my services because it's something positive for Poland. So, like I said, my bottom line with respect to all this stuff is that I would just like to have some vindication, if you will, that, you know, from, from this body, that I did not do anything criminal or anything of that nature. There was no malice or thought there was nothing stolen. And I just want that cleared up. Whether we kind of did a procedural thing, I will plead as guilty as Mr. Morrison with respect to that. But other than that, I would hope that he would certainly stand up and say that I did not do anything you know, with respect to theft or anything of that nature. That's all I have to say. I'll be happy to answer any questions if anybody has anything with respect to stuff. statement from, from either the mayor or council that I, you know, that the, any inference that I had done something uh, illegal or criminal with respect to theft of electricity be stated that that, that did not take place. And like I said, I know that the mayor did not say anything specific with respect to that. But the inference was there. And that's kind of the things that Greg's been getting, that the negative things that I've been getting from some folks with respect to that. Again, we had a miscommunication. These things happen. Yeah, we're all friends, we're all neighbors, we can talk to each other. Um, but you know, like I said, with respect to that, just you know, we can all admit that miscommunication took place, procedures didn't happen the way they probably should have. We will certainly rectify that in the future. But you know, just making it clear, and I'm not saying that you said anything, just making it absolutely clear that I did not do anything criminal or anything along those lines. And I think that's fair. Tim. You want to get together with Bob and work something out? Yeah, I mean, I'm, we don't have to have a committee. Well, I mean, nothing was, uh, if it was inferred if something was criminal, then that's the, um, I don't think, <clears throat> looking at the article, nothing that we said was inferred that. But at the end of the day, the way it was done, and it just, I mean, if you would have came to me, like, Greg, did apologize. That's all we're looking for is apology. No, we're not actually doing something wrong. And, and yeah, the service is there to use, but not to cut into and run lines and, we had an inspection guy come out. He found eight things wrong with it. So, I spoke so there's a liability that we're on. I mean, I'm the, in charge of the village here. And the school board probably has some issues, too, on their property. And he did not talk to them. Just because Bo and Larry, they, they don't encompass the school board and give you permission. If the school board gave you permission, they would have voted on it. They would have been, been a record. There's no record of that. But if some, how many kids are at, at Celebrate Poland? Thousands of little kids running around at rain both nights with water. There's six outlets without protective covers on sitting out there. There's a lot of things that possibly you have been responsible for. Some people get electro electrocuted. It's on us. Well, and, and Mr. Mayor, fact of the matter is, with respect to those things, uh, it has been something that has gone back to Dr. Zorn, uh, Mr. Daly, the school board, and their overall position with respect to this, insofar as their position being, you know, this is a great event for the entire community. Please feel free to do whatever you can need to do there. That box that's up there. Again, I helped, you know, Mr. Magna and I put that in. I didn't take any, any fees for that either. I mean, that was something that, you know, again, celebrate Poland split half that cost. And I can understand your concerns, but I can tell you also as a professional electrician, what I put in there was done by the book. It was done by code. I didn't understand what you're saying with respect to Mr. Minsky. I spoke to him myself. It wasn't done to code. He came out and he showed us several things about code. I understand what he said what, what wasn't up to code. I talked to him specifically about that today. First of all, the concern you have with regard to, say, any kind of electrocution there, those are all ground fault circuit interrupting uh, receptacles, which are preventing anybody from that occurring with respect to that. The in-use bubble covers, which need to be installed, and also what Mr. Grabinski said was the buttoning up of, of the panel. Now, this, these are stuff that I do every year, okay? I, at the end of each 
shell, I shut down every single circuit breaker with the exception of one, and those are the lights that are up there, that little parking lot there. I, I button up the entire box every single year. I hadn't quite gotten to it yet, okay? I, I plead guilty to being very busy and I haven't gotten to it. That's two weeks later. And, and, once, this came, and once this came out, and once this came out, I figured, you know, and understood that this was taking place, I figured the best thing to do. And again, through Mr. Gravinsky, he said that was probably your, your smart move from just a whatever. But I talked to Mr. Gravinsky and I said, John, John, and then this was one of my instructors, said, did I do anything technically illegal? I said, no, you didn't do anything technically illegal. There were some things that you probably should have done. <clears throat> and as far as their concern, they, they have, I said, do I have any issues? Do you have issues with me? Any type of fines or anything of that nature? He said, absolutely not. There is nothing that you, you've done to, to that extent that warrants anything of that nature. Again, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm not looking to get into any kind of fight or anything of that nature. Again, certain things weren't done. Understood. Like I said, it was just the inference Again, I don't think that you said anything. There wasn't that, but there were enough people out there for reading that article that, you know, thought that I had come in here and tapped into a line, you know, whereas that box out there, which we use specifically for Celebrate Poland, was utilized. Like I said, I'm not looking for a fight. I I'm not looking for anything. Again, if I made some mistakes here through a procedural thing and not coming, and, and I would next time, absolutely. I would be more than happy to. I saw you drive by us. As a Billy walked by us two, three times, that even with those things said, you know, I would have thought that everything was fine. Otherwise, I would have expected maybe somebody to stop and say, hey, what are you doing? Which I would have been more than happy to take whatever time was necessary to explain to you the things that were going on. And again, in my defense here, I honestly thought that everything was taken care of. He was speaking with the board president, having dealt with the superintendents in the past knowing that the president of our organization was going to speak to you know, Chief Beatty about this and making sure that everything people, was right. I mean, That sounds great, but people didn't know, Bob, and that's, that story's not true. I mean, none of our, I mean, Bill was on the committee with you for six months, nothing was said. I talked to Don Daly, I talked to Russ, all you guys talked about was the, the busing days before the event, the busing from the schools. That was never mentioned. No, no, no. And, that, and Larry and Bill did not make the school board. I can talk to Bill Donovan all I want, that's how councils Emphasis. I mean, there's, that's why we have committees, and that's why you wrote on things. And the specifics of what was changed on the box was, was not explained, and what and, and the commission wasn't wasn't requested to do that. And I wasn't aware that there was going to be such a huge change to that box. I I was under the impression that it was going to be the same as before. You plug in extension cords and you run extension cords, <coughs> and that's what I thought the electrical work was that you were doing. That was the impression that I got. Mm -hmm. I was not told of any specifics of a huge change in, in the box itself. Now, as far as uh, as far as any inference out there of uh, of you stealing electricity or celebrate Poland stealing electricity, we put that out there how many years ago at Streetscape's request, so that they would have electricity, right. and we did <coughs> that at the cost of the bill. So of course, okay, yeah. and we did that. We did, uh, they, so. they came to us. They asked us if that could happen, and we said, we'll take care of it for you, okay? And that communication was proper, and it was done properly, right. okay? And that's been there ever since then, specifically for the use of celebrating. <coughs> so if anybody, if anybody thinks that you stole electricity, that's what that is there for. And we've done that for how many years now since it's been there? The issue is, is the changes that were, that were made to the two village property without full disclosure. Mr. Donut. I couldn't have asked for anything more. I mean, that is exactly the whole thing right there. Procedurally, things were not done properly. However, this this is what that was for. I didn't say come in and tap anything. Really, I'm gonna leave it right there because that is all I've ever wanted here was just, that, those are the facts. Those are exactly the facts and, and they couldn't be said any better than that. And I thank you, and Mr. Mayor, thank you. And certainly we'll be doing a much better job here in the future. I'm sorry. Ask us to be happy to do so. No hard feelings? No, not at all. Never had it been. And Mr. Dunham, again, you couldn't have put it any better. Thank you for that. Okay. Hey, motion to resume.
acceptance of the minutes from the previous council meeting. Make a motion to waive the reading and accept the three. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Notification of meetings and events to the public and news media. Luke. Uh, you guys tonight are all going to be going on. Finance? Um, not yet. Actually, I think we, we should consider setting up a meeting sometime in the next month and look at the information on Star Plus. Um, I believe that Nick has some information <coughs> put together, and I think it's something we should definitely consider switching the uh, Star Ohio account to Star Plus. I think we'll get a better return on our investment money, and that we should definitely be looking at that. Legislation? Nothing. Please. Uh, streets? Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, police, police will meet at the uh, next council meeting. So, so, uh, All right. uh, boards, ARB? First Thursday, 7 o'clock. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, planning? Planning will meet uh, next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Um, we're going to be asking the historic uh, preservation legislation group to be there. Yes. Can you, can you make sure that they get that up on? Yeah, I've got a list of everyone's names and emails. I'll send that out and distribute it at the meeting. Okay. okay. Uh, Board of Zone Appeals? Yeah, thanks, Jay. And Western Reserve Fire District? Nothing. We're going to meet. Okay. Forest, <laughs> Forest Board? Nothing. And High Memorial? Okay, we're meeting tomorrow, Wednesday at 3 o'clock up at the church. Yeah, because of here's the problem, I can't be there. And now Linda is off of it. Right. So we're going to be missing a bunch of people. Bunch of people is cool. That's why. Is Rebecca, that's is Rebecca informed? Does she, she expect to come tomorrow? I have no idea. I, I never, do you have any information about the high fund finances? Have you got anything yet? Right now, things are being sent to her on the home. Correct. So as she gets it in, she whatever. Have you got anything from her, though? I got a check last week. Okay, we don't know what the situation is. What do we have in the fund? Oh, what you have in the fund? Yeah, all that. That's on the first sheet here. Yeah, now. okay, but, but is she keeping your current month by month? Well, let's say? The fund. The fund of the oh. village is here. Okay, but I know we're working the, on the you know, investment yeah. fund is I know. with stifle. Yeah. Okay. I know that. Okay, but every month we're supposed to know what the interest income is. Yes. Okay. You have you had that? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. So you're current? Yes. Okay, good. That's all I want to know. Okay. Did you let Log know about me? Let her know. Yeah, I'll give him a call. I'll give him a call. It's going to be just be free. I think mostly what it was was uh, the purpose of it was to be to talk about any trees on the property that need to be taken down. That's that was the main reason behind that. Okay. Future okay. expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Trees are expensive. Yes. Leave them alone. <coughs> All right. Report from the mayor. And other than having any other one, I gave a caucus. <coughs> Still yeah. Let's so, uh, move to approve the mayor's report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, report, report from the fiscal officer, Mr. Senator. Okay. Payment of bills, I'm circulating that list. Um, for this meeting, it's 11,695 a year. Uh, the uh, you know, accounts have been reconciled as of June 30th. You have in your possession the you know, monthly figures. Um, I think we went over this in the caucus, but I sent a letter to the uh, auditor's office requesting the second half property tax advances. Those will start July 26. We received a we received a refund from the state of Ohio workers' comp. There was a surplus in the fund. We received $6,019.11. Um, we received that invoice for fireworks 
for a thousand dollars. And if I can just remind council that POs have to be signed a little more timely. I spoke with the uh, thing about this, you know, Russ Beatty about this, and there are some jobs that are being held up because these are not being signed. So like one bill with those for the uh, fall for the thing uh thing uh in uh thing at all. Yes. That that was uh, held up for like a, a week or so. So we have to get in a little bit of science. Okay. They're probably in somebody's box, right? Right. And nobody looks at it. And you want the want some action on that. Okay. Well, Let's do it. Those that were in the box for the last week, they were all signed in. Okay. okay. I've got them now. Okay. But some go in there tomorrow. I don't know when they'll be signed. Okay. Okay? Okay. So, got it. Um, okay. Um, and the report. Looking to accept. Thanks for that. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Anything from the Deputy Clerk? Nothing. Okay. Report from Zoning Minister, Mr. Spawn. Well, I've discussed everything in caucus. Section of the set. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, report from Solicitor. Other than the, um, the issue of the pavilion, the other issue I mentioned was the tree um, that fell on the car. Um, Mayor forwarded to me a, a message from Mr. Mauer, I believe his name is stepson was driving on Riverside, or I guess before Riverside on 170, and a tree branch fell on, on, him, on his car and damaged it. And he had called his insurance company and they had said that there's no liability for the insurance company, that it would be the, the village's responsibility or I don't know if he said the homeowner or not. Um, so I talked to him and um, I said that was the first response of any trust company that I've ever heard of, which was to deny uh, liability and then to go from there. So I did some research on the issue of trees falling on roadways. And what I found was the only way a, a village or a governmental entity is responsible is if there was notice to the village, uh, some kind of complaint or some kind of um, you know, writing that the tree needed tending to and that the village had inspected the tree and deemed that to be accurate. Absent that happening, then the village is not perceived to have constructive notice that there was an issue. And then in my opinion, it would fall back on the homeowner. And apparently the homeowner is a gentleman or someone that owns that bought the bank building maybe a year or two ago. And it's my opinion, unless Mr. Responti or, or Mr. Ames is on that here. Have you ever you have gotten any notice about a tree on 170, an issue with a tree on 170 falling on the roadway or anything like that? So it's the only one that I've gotten. It was uh, not not in the village. And so I, I called the insurance man. He said it was a mistake. All right. Any notice, Dave, of any trees? I just took over. So. Okay. just want to make sure I'll call the gentleman back to let him know. In my opinion, we have no liability, and I'll refer him to the uh, gentleman that owns that property, the bank building. That's who I think would be liable. If not, then he would go on his his own car insurance of an of uninsured or underinsured claim. And that's what he would proceed. So I'm going to deny liability for the village. Anthony, I, I, I have a question. Um, the gentleman who owns the bank building um, actually contacted me uh, two days ago. It was on, over the weekend. Um, and asked if he actually owns the tree that's in the devil strip in front of his building. The reason he had called was because his neighbor, who would be Mr. Yule, mm -hmm. that is the that is the tree where the bow has fallen. That we actually own that devil strip. Okay, so we the village owns the devil strip in front of Mr. Yule's home. This tree that you're referring to is immediately adjacent to that tree. So do we know if we own that devil strip or do we know 
if the owner of the bank building owns that double shift? I would say, because if I remember correctly, Mr. Yule put a, his own tree up on that double strip after the problem that we had with this past tree was taken care of, wherein I believe the village paid for the removal of the tree, if I'm not mistaken, and he took it upon himself to put a new tree up. And although I felt if we really wanted to be mean about it, we could go tear that tree down. Um, but if he took it upon himself to plant that tree and tend to that tree, then it's his responsibility. It's my opinion that in that double strip, it's the landowner's job who, who, who owns the property adjacent to it and the property, I guess, behind it, to maintain that property. It's not our job to do that. We have the right to go in and do things if we want to do something to it for the safety of the, of the public roadway. And specifically in the cases I read, if, if property is not maintained in these areas, we are able to supersede the landowner's rights to trim those trees and maintain them. Give a notice. That's going back to the notice issue. So my, my opinion is that it's the homeowner's property and the homeowner's responsibility to maintain that those trees. It's our right to maintain them if we feel <coughs> that there's a danger and we've been given notice and there is a refusal to act on the part of the, of the homeowner. So it's it's not our responsibility, it's our right. So I would say it's his property and it's his tree and it's his liability. Do you want me to actually call him back and tell him this? Okay. And I'll call the insurance company. I have their information. Mr. Maurer's insurance company, I'll tell them that. And I'll give an opinion to that. That's it. Outstanding committees of council, finance, wage, audit, <coughs> and insurance. Not yet. Fourth coming. <laughs> legislation and policy. Nothing. Police and fire. No. Street, sidewalks, and drainage. The streets today, we talked about two things. We're going to have to be buying a trailer so that we're coming because he can't even haul his foot back. And uh, we need to seriously think about getting. Is that something that needs done this year, Mark? Yes. So, do you have any kind of an idea? No, we just talked about it today. Okay. He's starting the early part of the year. Is council good with going into the uh, star money for that? I mean, it seems to me that this is one of the reasons right. we have that. That's, that's what I told Russ in our meeting today. That's the most. How much would you start with? Trailers. He needs help. He's falling over. Motion to approve the street report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I don't believe it. Yeah, we met tonight before this meeting and uh, we reviewed the inspector's report uh, of the infamous electrical box. And uh, we discussed what modifications might be needed based on, based on that report. Uh, we really didn't come to a final decision yet. I'm not sure we'll that. Okay. Um, we uh, received a bill uh, from Colonial Fireworks for $1,000 for fireworks. Memorial. 
in the Western Reserve Fire District. Okay, reports from special committees. Communications from residents. Uh, any new business? Any old business? Motions, ordinances, resolutions. Yes, Mr. Major. Yep. Mr. Sir. Yes. Five years. 